My name's Abdul Hamid, I'm one of the consultants in the Sheffield Pulmonary Hypertension Service. And I'm just going to talk to you briefly about echocardiography, which is a, one of the important diagnostic investigations that we perform. Transthoracic echocardiography is uh, one of the initial diagnostic tests that you will uh, undergo as part of your investigations for breathlessness, both prior to diagnosis, but often it's a test that can be used uh, for follow-up and you may undergo a repeat test at possibly intervals of, of, of around every year or, or more frequently depending on the circumstances. Now an echocardiogram involves the use of ultrasound and a ultrasound probe that we place on the chest wall. We take images of the heart from different angles. We can look at all four chambers of the heart to look at their size, to see the valves in the heart and also the main pumping chambers to see whether there's any problems in terms of the thickness of the muscle, the strength of the heartbeat, and to see how things are changing over time. We can look at the valves and to see whether they're competent, and we can use some measurements from these uh, assessments to determine both the uh, severity of the pulmonary hypertension and the strength, or for that matter, the weakness of the right side of the heart. Echocardiography is a tool that you may have encountered in other circumstances because it's a, a test that can be used to, to diagnose um, different kinds of heart disease. So it's an important test. It takes around 30 to 45 minutes depending on what kind of information is required and it's a relatively straightforward and painless uh, uh, diagnostic procedure that we perform. So I'll just go on to show you uh, an example of how we perform echocardiography and this is something that uh, you may come across. It's a very important uh, investigation because it provides significant amount of information uh, and it's certainly something that doesn't involve placing any tubes or wires within to the body so it's what we'd regard as a non-invasive investigation. Right so uh, an echocardiogram involves uh, ultrasound gel which I'm placing here on this ultrasound probe and a small probe which is placed on the chest shouldn't cause any discomfort. The, the jelly can feel a little cold occasionally sometimes, but it shouldn't cause any bother. And we can now take some pictures of the heart with this probe on the chest wall. We can look at the heart valves uh, and the chamber. In this particular view, you can see uh, two valves, the mitral valve and the aortic valve, and the left ventricle here. And we, look, we can look at the heart uh, from different angles by just rotating the probe. We can use uh, a feature called color Doppler to look at blood flow within the heart and to ensure that there's no significant leak of any of the chambers. We can also do some measurements in these positions of the heart chamber size. We can again place color Doppler to look at blood flow through the valve and we can take some measurements across here to measure the speed of blood, what we call Doppler velocities. And these things are required as part of a standard echocardiographic assessment to look at the heart chamber. And then we can take some pictures, usually just from the breastbone, uh, but also we take some pictures from different angles of the heart. And one of those is, is taking pictures just below the, uh, the nipple there. In this position, we can see several, four chambers of the heart here. And because pulmonary hypertension can be caused by several different reasons, uh, causes that's why it's important that the echocardiographic uh, the initial echocardiographic evaluation is is a complete study it's a relative it takes around 30 to 45 minutes to do a complete study and uh, a particular and the first study may be longer because of the need to collect uh, a comprehensive amount of information so um, following the echocardiogram uh, the individual uh, the clinician performing the scan will write a report and this report will either be made available uh, when, when you see your um, medical team or nursing team in clinic uh, to describe the report. And often the report will compare the present findings with any, uh, with any previous studies to, 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 um, to, to see if there's been any change. Uh, and the report should generally be available on the day, but that does vary depending on who's performed the scan and where. Okay, but usually that information is readily available uh, the day or within a few days okay and that report should be fed back to you at your clinical consultation 
Occasionally you may be having the scan done as in the outpatients and the report will be returned back to your uh, clinical team who should hopefully discuss the findings with you uh, at the next consult.